Take a step on the road to fun. Take a step on the road into nature. Take a step on the road into the past. Take a step on the road to sharing powerful stories. Take a step on the road to experiencing big ideas. Take a step with Humanities on the Road as speakers from the Pennsylvania Humanities Council take you on a journey through history, literature, the arts, and the world around you. Learn more about Humanities on the Road and discover why the humanities are important to you at humanitiesontheroad.org. Welcome to Humanities on the Road, where we join you from the Philadelphia Academy of Natural Sciences to explore the life and legacy of biologist Rachel Carson with our special guest, Vivian Schaefer. And I'm Tracy Matisak. Humanities on the Road is a unique opportunity for audiences all across Pennsylvania to explore history and science and the arts and the important ideas that shape our world. We are joining you from outside in. It's the Children's Museum at the Academy, and what a cool place this is. There are all kinds of interesting things you can do here. For instance, you can crawl through a fallen log. You can touch a live meteorite. You can even watch a live beehive if you're so inclined. And we thought that this would be the perfect setting for a program like this because of all the interesting and creative activities that are here that really can help us to explore how Rachel Carson, as a writer and as a scientist, helped change the way that we view the natural world. So we've got some interesting activities and all kinds of fun things for the children to do. And speaking of the children, they are our special guests today. We've got students with us who are from Friends Select. Also, we've got some students from the Russell Byers Charter School, and they're going to help us explore nature's treasures. So that should be a very good time. Our speaker is Vivian Schaefer, and Vivian is a longtime fan of the work of Rachel Carson. Vivian is especially interested in the relationship between artistic expression and the way we experience the world. She is an educator. She has taught in schools and museums and nature centers and all kinds of other learning environments. So with all that said, let's turn it over to Vivian for Rachel Carson and Nature's Treasures. Please join me as we welcome Vivian Schaefer. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you to all of you for coming out to find out about Rachel Carson and Nature's Treasures. The first thing we're going to do is to explore the Nature Discovery Treasure Chest. What do you think you would find in a treasure chest? When I say treasure chest, what do you think about? What do you think? Gold and jewels. Gold and jewels. When you think of treasure, you think of gold and jewels. Why is that? Because usually in like stories, when there's a treasure chest, it's filled with jewels and gold. So it's filled with things that have a lot of value, things that are worth a lot. Ah, that's a kind of treasure. What do you think? In the treasure chest, I think there are valuables, like things that are, are important to people, like e either like physically, spiritually, and all that wise, or it may be just like valuables. Things that are valuable, things that are valuable spiritually as well as materially. I think you've been reading Rachel Carson. <laughs> what do you think? Money. You think there's money? <laughs> We'll find out. Well, now I'm going to give you a couple of clues. The clues come from Rachel Carson herself. Here's the first one. Ready? Beauty and all the values that derive from beauty are not measured and evaluated in terms of the dollar. So people did say valuables. And they said spiritual valuables, but I don't think we're going to find any money. You want another clue? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
This comes from a letter that Rachel Carson wrote when she was mad because a scientist that she highly respected was being fired. She said that natural resources and the use of natural resources should be based on scientific research, not politics. And this is what she said. The real wealth of the nation lies in the resources of the earth. Soil, water, forests, minerals, and wildlife. So now what do you think we're going to find in the treasure chest? Yes? Um, maybe leaves and sticks and stuff that, come from, that comes from nature? Things that come from nature. And what do you think? Me? You, right here. Um, and small animals? Small animals? I, I don't hear them scurrying around if they're in there. Well, who wants to come up and look inside? Come on up. We're opening the treasure chest, and you get to pick one thing. Are you ready? What do you have there? You have feathers. Now, what would that represent in that quote from Rachel Carson? What do you think? A bird. It would represent a bird, wildlife. And there's one feather in here that's especially valuable. Can I show you which one? This feather is the one that means the most to me. And the reason is that this feather comes from a bald eagle. If it weren't for Rachel Carson, there might not be any more bald eagles. Because when she wrote her book about pesticides, she helped everyone to understand the damage that they were doing. Not just to the bald eagle, but bald eagles were going extinct. Their eggs were breaking before the young chicks could hatch. And so thanks to Rachel Carson, we still have bald eagles in the world today. You can take those feathers with you back to your seat, and I'll get them back from you later on. Who else wants to come up? Yes. Wow. This is special because Rachel Carson wrote three books about the ocean. And she grew up in Western Pennsylvania. Is there an ocean in Western Pennsylvania? So how did a kid from Western Pennsylvania get interested in the ocean? One way was that she liked to play with her mother's collection of seashells. And if you hold that shell up to your ear, you can hear the air resonating around inside the chambers of the shell. And people like to imagine that they're hearing the sound of the ocean. It does sound like the sea. Doesn't it sound like the sea? And that was one of the things that got her so interested in that. You can take that back to your seat. Who else wants to come up? Let's see, right here in front. Come stand over here and choose anything you like. Wow. Hold that up. It's heavy. Hold that up so everyone can see it. This is a piece of limestone. And Rachel Carson wrote something about a piece of limestone very much like this one in her book, The Sea Around Us. This is what she said. You do not have to travel to find the sea, for the traces of its ancient stands are everywhere about. Though you may be a thousand miles inland, you can easily find reminders that will reconstruct for the eye and ear of the mind the processions of its ghostly waves and the roar of its surf far back in time. So, on a mountaintop in Pennsylvania, I have sat on rocks of a whitened limestone, fashioned of the shells of billions upon billions of minute sea creatures.
creatures, just like the one that you're holding right here. You can take that back to your seat with you, and let's see who wants to come up next. How about right there in the back? Come on up. What else do we have in here? Hold that up for everyone to see. What do you have there? What do you think that is? It's a piece of comb. Who made it? Rachel. Rachel didn't make this. No person can make this. It's only one kind of creature that can make this. Do you know who made it? A snake. No. Bees. bees. Honeybees. Rachel Carson wrote about honeybees and wild bees in her book, Silent Spring. Honeybees and wild bees depend heavily on such weeds as goldenrod, mustard, and dandelions for pollen that serves as the food of their young. Vetch furnishes essential spring forage for bees before the alfalfa is in bloom, tiding them over this early season so that they are ready to pollinate the alfalfa. In the fall, they depend on goldenrod at a season when no other food is available to stock up for the winter. By the precise and delicate timing that is nature's own, the emergence of one species of wild bees takes place on the very day of the opening of the willow blossoms. You can carry that back to your seat with you if you like, and let's have someone else. Let's have somebody way in the back in the striped shirt in the back row there. Come on up. What do you think about honeybees? Are they a treasure? What do you think about honey? That's some good stuff. But the pollinating is important too. Without bees to pollinate our crops, no food. What do we have here? Um, some dirt. Some dirt? <laughs> <laughs> or mud? Yeah. What do you think? Is that a treasure? You don't think it's a treasure? Well, then what's it doing in the treasure chest? <laughs> Let's see if Rachel Carson can give us another clue. Let's see. Here we have soil. Is soil the same thing as dirt? Kind of. This is soil. A kind of dirt. The best kind of dirt. And here's why. The thin layer of soil that forms a patchy covering over the continents controls our own existence and that of every other animal of the land. Without soil, land plants as we know them could not grow, and without plants, no animals could survive. Can I get a show of hands? Who here is an animal? If you don't have your hand up, I take it that you're a vegetable or a mineral? <laughs> we need the soil. So shall we keep it among the treasures? Yes. All those in favor? I think so. You can take that soil back to your seat with you. And let's see who else wants to come up. Way in the very back in the nice pink and gray stripes. Come on up. We still have lots of treasures. What would you like to pick? What's that? Sand. Sand. Where does sand come from? Yes? The beach. Sand comes from the beach. What's it made out of? Dirt, rocks, what else? Little tiny minerals. Little, little teeny tiny minerals. Very little minerals. Why don't you carry that back down there and show it to some folks and let them see just how teeny 